Ms. Paul, how has your campaign evolved? Uh, have you had to pivot in the days leading up to September 20th? Well, we're really pleased uh, that we have had the opportunity to do some uh, travel outside of uh, the, the Toronto Centre riding. Uh, I was just in Kitchener Centre a couple of days ago. Uh, I think we have a really good chance there. I had a Maritimes rally with a lot of our Maritimes uh, candidates out in PEI. Um, we also got to spend some time with our uh, candidates in the um, Quebec uh, border, Quebec Ontario border area as well. So that's been nice. And it's a change from the beginning of the campaign where we were really focused on uh, Toronto Centre uh, and running the national campaign out there. The uh, Green Party is not represented in uh, all ridings. Uh, where your party is not running a candidate, who should uh, Green Party supporters vote for? Yes, you know, it was really a disappointment not to have candidates in all of our, our ridings, and I had expected that we would. I'm very proud of the ones that we have, particularly because many of them came to us through the, the Time to Run campaign that I launched, which was focused on getting more diversity into our party. Uh, and about 70% of our candidates come from equity seeking groups this time around. So I'm really proud of that. Uh, in terms of all the ridings, including ours, what I say to people is vote for the person you think is going to be the best representative, not only for your community, but for the issues that matter to you. Uh, I hope that those issues include the climate, I hope that those issues include completing our social safety net so that we can take the lessons we've learned from the pandemic. And I hope that uh, they're voting for a, a more just society because we really need to work on that. Uh, so whomever they think is going to champion those things in Ottawa, that's where their vote should be. Where do you hope to win seats? Where would you like to win seats? Well, we're hoping certainly to hang on to our seats in British Columbia. And I think we're in good shape for that. Um, it's a very, very tight race. I, I don't know if you're following it uh, out in Fredericton, but that is a very, very tight race as well, one where we could come out on top. Uh, and then certainly here in Ontario, we're hoping to win a couple of seats as well. That being said, you know, elections are unexpected and sometimes uh, things happen that you don't expect. We didn't expect to win that seat out in Fredericton in 2019. Uh, the goal has to be in an election to elect as many Green MPs as possible. When you uh, take a look back, let's uh, talk about some of the uh, lessons learned. There were some uh, accusations of uh, infighting, uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, former BC uh, Green leader uh, Andrew Weaver was uh, accused of supporting uh, the Liberals' climate change plan. Well, what do you uh, walk away with? It, it's, it has been very tough. I mean, there's, there's no uh, dissimulating that. It's been very tough. Uh, we, we did enter this uh, election cycle um, weekend because of the things that had happened. Uh, I, I, I have said before, I wouldn't call it infighting. I certainly was not uh, fighting um, uh, my party and, and I'm just a person, um, you know, having to deal with an entire system but, uh, you know, that's something that I feel very badly about because I know that uh, the climate in particular is something that is really on people's minds. I think that we had a chance uh, to uh, really leverage that in this election. And then more than anything, I know that when Greens do get elected, they really prove their worth. And so anything that compromises our ability to get more candidates elected is something uh, that's disappointing to me. So, you know, it's been, uh, it's been very difficult. I've, I've tried to use this role uh, to give people a window into what it's like for women and people of color in politics. It's, it's very tough. Uh, it has been a very difficult experience. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm proud to have gotten this far. I'm proud to be supporting the candidates. And I'm proud to show that it, it is possible, at least, um, to get this far uh, for someone like me in politics. If you uh, don't win in your uh, own riding, how do you think about the future? Will you stay as the leader of the Green Party? Well, with only a few days left in, uh, in the election cycle, I'm really focusing on doing everything that I can to support our candidates. Uh, I, I've said a few times that, and having been a candidate for myself three times now for the Green Party, I've kind of been a, a candidate for the Green Party in one way or another for the past uh, two and a half years now. 
And I know how much goes into it. I know how much sacrifice uh, you, you make and your family makes uh, for you to run. Uh, I know how passionate uh, many of the candidates are about their communities and, and what great MPs they would make. So for me in these last few days, anything that I can do to support them uh, and hopefully see some of them elected, it's really my focus. And, and then, um, you know, we'll see about uh, we'll see about the rest. Ultimately, where do you see the Green Party fitting into this equation of Canadian politics? Well, I think that the thing that uh, Greens uh, Greens bring to whatever level of government that they were elected first is a real commitment to the people who elected them in the first place. Uh, there is no prioritization over partisan, you know, with uh, partisan concerns over the concerns of your constituents. Uh, they make really good uh, MPs for the people who elected them. Uh, so that's a big thing. It seems like a little thing, but more and more politics is about the party that you belong to as opposed to the people who elected you. And I think that's the reason that every Green who's ever been elected gets reelected. Uh, the other thing that they bring is a spirit of cooperation. And that really shines through in places like PEI, where we're in the opposition, yet we pass 14 pieces of legislation. Uh, that's, un, you know, that's unheard of in the way that we conduct, um, uh, and conduct ourselves in Parliament. Uh, so that's the kind of spirit we bring, cooperation, collaboration, willing to work across party lines. And given the big issues that we're facing right now, we just need more of that. We need more of that in Parliament. And that's something that Greens can offer. Ms. Paul, um, indulge us for a moment. If it's not you going forward, who and what would you like to see for the party? Oh, I, I, I haven't uh, I haven't passed uh, my mind uh, to that uh, at all. I really um, I'm just again, I'm focused on these last few days and just considering every the circumstances under which I'm, I'm doing this election. It's just about all I can do right now. Um, and I would say ultimately that question, it, it's an excellent question, but one that will be up to the members of the, the party. Uh, I think that there's going to be a lot, uh, a lot of eagerness to try to take lessons from this last period and, and learn uh, from them from amongst the members, but, but that will really be for them to do.